Computers can crank out payrolls and do math. But just as important, they can be fun. Way back in the caveman era of computers, around 1970, most computers were either very, very large or merely living room sized. Then along came the electronic chip and computer became a household word. To help you understand microcomputers, you'll need to understand a few buzzwords. What are buzzwords? They're simply nicknames. Buzzwords are terms which have special meanings to people in a particular profession. With computers, think of buzzwords as nicknames for parts of a computer or some of the things it can do. How does this thing called a microcomputer work? It seems like magic, but it's not. In fact, once you've learned the basic buzzwords, you'll begin to see how easy it really is. So let's begin. To work for us, a computer must be part of a complete system. What is a complete system? Well, for a moment, let's think of food processors. Food processors are systems of plastic, metal, and electronic circuits. However, they need our help. So we actually select the right amount of food and process it to the taste and consistency we want. If any one element of the system is missing, we won't be able to turn our food into a finished meal. The same is true with computers. Computer systems process information. Like food processors, all parts of the system must be present before they can solve any problems for us. We must also give the computer system directions to make it rearrange information and return it to us in the form we want. If the computer system is missing any one of its elements, it's less than a complete system and it will be unable to do what we ask it. Computer systems are composed of two basic parts, the computer and its peripherals. Let's start by talking about the buzzword peripherals. The computer communicates with the outside world by using peripherals. Peripherals are the devices by which data enters and leaves the computer. The inputs and outputs of a computer. Computers and peripherals together make up a system. A typical input device is a keyboard. An output device is the TV screen in front of you now. You might think of input and output devices as the eyes, ears, and voice of your computer. The central element of your computer is the computer itself. So let's take a look at the computer's brain. Now just like a human brain, the computer's brain controls everything that goes on. The computer's brain is called a CPU. CPU is a buzzword for central processing unit. It sounds impressive, but the human brain can be called a central processing unit also because it is the central control that directs all incoming and outgoing information. The computer's CPU also processes all the incoming and outgoing information. But instead of eyes and ears, the CPU has things like keyboards and video screens to serve as its sensory inputs and outputs. A CPU alone is not a complete computer. It needs a crucial element, memory. A human must have memory in order to function, and it's the same with a computer. Without memory, the human system and the computer system are useless. The part of the human system that functions as memory is the cerebrum. The cerebral part of your computer is called RAM. R-A-M. RAM is another one of those buzzwords that computer people are so fond of. It stands for Random Access Memory. But it's just memory and nothing to get confused about. What does Random Access Memory mean? First, let's think about a tape recorder. Now, most of us know that a tape recorder uses magnetic tape, and to play a song in the middle of the tape, you have to wind it forward or backward. The songs are recorded on the tape in a sequential manner, or one after another. We could say that we have to sequentially access them. Access simply means a way to get at something. 
tapes will give you access to your songs sequentially. However, if you've ever had to wait for your tape to rewind, you know that it's a fairly slow process. RAM is not sequential. It has random access. If we had songs in RAM, we could locate a song and jump to it without going through the entire catalog of songs. RAM can jump from the beginning of memory to the end in the same amount of time it takes to jump from the beginning to the middle. In fact, RAM can get information out of any part of memory almost instantaneously. Random access memory is a storage area that functions very quickly because it doesn't have to go in sequential fashion but can jump immediately to the information that's needed. If you have a rotary dial on your telephone, you can only dial an 8 or a 9 by moving the dial through all the other numbers. Rotary phones are sequential access devices. If you have a touchstone phone, however, you can press the number 9 without touching any other number. The touchstone phone is random access. In telephones and in computers, random access is faster than sequential access, and that's why it's the most efficient method of getting information in and out of the computer. This is the end of part one. If you are unsure about any of the terms we've covered, review them as often as you wish. Part two will explain the rest of the system. Now that you know something about peripherals and the computer itself, you should know that these things are called hardware. Anything you can reach out and touch is considered hardware. Hardware consists of such things as disk drives, the computer itself, the screen, and the tape recorder. To make it all work together, you need another very important element, something called software. You can think of software in this way. Software is the record you play on your stereo. Without the record, your expensive stereo would just sit there in total silence. Software is simply a series of commands or instructions you play on your computer to make it work for you. With your computer, software is stored magnetically on a floppy disk or on a cassette tape. Your computer functions by carrying out a series of commands. These commands make the computer do its work. Software commands are called programs. When you go to a concert, you're given a program. A concert program tells you what music will be played and in what order. That program is a set of instructions to the musicians. It tells them what to play and when to play it. A computer program is a set of instructions to the CPU that tells it what to do and when to do it. You might also think of a program as being like the checklist an airline pilot completes. The checklist is a set of instructions that the crew follows in the same order before every takeoff. The step-by-step -step approach assures the pilot and crew that all systems and equipment are in good working order. The checklist is like computer software which goes step by step. All activities involve steps like this. You even unconsciously follow a program to get a cup of coffee. In addition to RAM memory, all computers have something called ROM in them. ROM, R-O-M, is a buzzword meaning read-only memory. ROM is very similar to RAM or random access memory. But if we think of the human brain again, ROM is like the automatic part of the brain. For example, when you reach for a glass of water, it seems that you do it automatically. But really, your brain sends a series of commands that move your arm and cause your fingers to pick up the glass. The instructions that help you reach for the glass are stored permanently in your brain, just waiting to be used. 
If we think of both RAM and ROM as written memory, the RAM is like a blackboard. The information in RAM can be erased, and RAM can be used again to write something else. ROM, however, is like a printed page and cannot be erased. And ROM is sometimes referred to as firmware, or software fixed permanently in memory. One of the most common types of programs that's stored in the computer's ROM are the set of instructions that keep information flowing to and from the outside world. This program functions like a traffic policeman. Just think of what would happen if we tried to drive in the wrong lane during rush hour. Well, in the same way, something is needed to keep the incoming and outgoing information from colliding in the computer. The automatic traffic control is a permanent program that is always in the computer, just waiting to be used. The program is run automatically every time it's needed, just like the human program that gets us a drink of water, or the airline checklist that assures us a safe flight. ROM is also random access, but the CPU can only read information out of it. RAM is different because the CPU can get the contents out of RAM and can also put information back into it. Maybe you've wondered how programs actually get into the computer or what the phrase loading the program really means. Well, the CPU reads the contents of a program then places those instructions into its RAM. Unless you enter a program from the keyboard every time you wish to use it, your computer will need a mass storage device. Computers can operate without mass storage, but they'll have very limited capability. A library is a mass storage device. It contains large amounts of information waiting to be used. A scientist doesn't need to keep every detail about a research project stored inside his or her brain. All it takes is a visit to the library to retrieve information whenever it's needed. The scientist can operate as an independent agent, but really needs a library of information to make research proceed at full speed. It's the same with a computer. A computer needs to have access to a data library in order to operate at full capacity. It must be able to gather information that has been stored and use it rapidly and efficiently. While the scientist stores information in books, the computer uses other methods to store information. The storage devices most widely used in microcomputers are floppy disks and the common everyday cassette recorder. The cassette recorder uses tape and the programs are recorded magnetically. A floppy disk is just a flattened out version of the tape. The floppy disk is also magnetic and records data on it instead of sound. If you recall, tapes are sequential. Floppy disks are random access. Random access is a much better and faster way of getting your information out of the data library and into your computer. Mass storage is the external memory used to supplement or refresh the computer's internal memory. It's the final element in learning what goes into your computer system. This is the end of Introduction to Microcomputers, part of the best computer coaching series brought to you by Boston Electronic Systems Training. <laughs>